Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a continuation of my video series called Why X Group Flopped. And as you guys can tell by the title, we are going to be discussing the girl group Very Good. A lot of you guys have requested that I cover the group Very Good and it took me a while to finally post it, but it is finally here. So once again, if you have any groups you'd like me to include in this series, please comment them down below. I'm always looking in my comment section for groups you guys want me to cover and almost all of the groups in this series have been chosen by you all. So before we get into the video, once again, I want to give a couple of disclaimers. Number one, this video is in no way trying to make fun of this group or the fact that they were unsuccessful. This video series exists purely to inform. Number two, if you are a fan of this group and you notice that I got something wrong, please politely correct me in the comments below. I try and be as thorough as possible when researching these groups, but because these groups are relatively unknown, it's hard to find information about them. So if I say something wrong, please let me know because I don't want to spread any misinformation about the group. Also, I'm going to be changing the format of these groups by combining the reasons these groups flopped with my own thoughts instead of keeping them separate like in past videos. Let me know whether or not you guys like it. But yeah, with all that out of the way, let's just get into the video. Very Good debuted as a five-member girl group consisting of members Teha, Subin, Lira, Nayan, and Gowen under JTG Entertainment. The group made their debut on May 21st, 2014 with the lead single Love Letter, which was a remake of a song released by the boy group Click B in 2000. Their current lineup consists of members Johyun, Soyul, Dae, Sehyung, and Gowun. Now that we've gone over the basics, let's get into why they were unsuccessful. Very Good made their debut in 2014, the same year as groups like Red Velvet, Lovelies, Mamamoo, La Boom, and many more. With all of these groups debuting, some of them coming from companies much more powerful than JTG Entertainment, they were immediately outshone. I want to be clear that what I'm about to say is not meant to be an insult towards Very Good, but rather an observation of the industry at the time. The group debuted with a cute, soft, and elegant concept, which unfortunately did not attract much attention. Plenty of groups in the industry were already doing this concept, and not only that, but the most powerful group with this concept, G-Friend, would debut less than a year after Very Good, meaning that at the time, no one was looking for a group like them. There were plenty of other groups doing the exact same thing they were. There was nothing about Very Good that stood out from the crowd, leading them to go practically unnoticed in their early years. However, there was hope for Very Good. The Hayu wave had been on a rise for years and reached a peak in 2018 with the release of BTS's Fake Love, Blackpink's Doo 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 Doo, and many more. It was a huge year for the expansion of K-pop and plenty of groups who would have never seen success otherwise hit it big in 2018. All Barry Good and their company needed to do was read the industry and give Barry Good a comeback that would get their name out there both domestically and internationally. Unfortunately, this did not happen. While this was a pretty big year for Barry Good and their fandom with the debut of their first subunit and the release of their first full studio album, their activities went largely unnoticed by the industry. In fact, out of 60 girl groups who released music in 2018, Barry Good ranked 54th for most albums sold that year with only 1,497 sales. Barry Good's company completely misread the industry, and instead of giving them a comeback that matched the demands of the general public at the time, they completely ignored all of the signs pointing to a need for the change in the group's concept and proceeded to do what in reality had never worked for Barry Good to begin with. While they did end up receiving some attention due to 2018 being a breakout year for K-pop, they went relatively unnoticed in comparison to other groups that year. As stated previously, the original lineup of Very Good consisted of members Teha, Subin, Ira, Nayan, and Goon. However, only months after their debut, it was announced in January of 2015 that Subin, Lira, and Nayan would be leaving the group. It was said that the members left to focus on their studies. While this may have been true, Nayan later went on to compete in the 2017 survival show Idol School, and while she didn't make it into the final lineup, she later opened her own YouTube channel where she posted singing covers. This led people to speculate over the real reason Nayan left, as she had clearly not given up her passion for singing. After the departure of Nayan and two other members, three new members, Soyu, Dae, and Seyoung replaced them almost immediately just in time for their comeback. In September of 2016, just before the release of their second mini-album, a new member, Jo Hyun, was added to the lineup. In May of 2019, just two days before the release of their third mini-album, it was announced that Teha's contract with GTG Entertainment had expired and that she would be leaving the group. Now we've gone over how lineup changes affect a group's popularity in past videos. Based on the research that I've done for this series, I've come to the conclusion that unless the group is under a big three company, frequent lineup changes are almost always a sign of a group that's about to flop. 
Lineup changes lead people to be hesitant in standing a group as there's no consistency of who is in the group at any given time. In the case of Very Good, it wasn't their fault that the lineup changed so frequently, nor was there anything the company could really do to prevent members from leaving, but this still made them seem weaker and more inconsistent in comparison to groups they were competing with. Very Good has been involved in quite a few scandals. While none of them have been very severe in nature, it still put the members involved in a negative light. In May of 2019, Dae was accused by a former classmate of bullying and assault. Dae responded to this allegation by threatening legal action, and because of this, someone else later came forward and accused Dae of bullying her as well. Both GTG Entertainment and Dae denied these allegations, and it was eventually revealed that Dae was telling the truth, but the damage was already done as many netizens did not side with her. Less than a month later, another member, Jo Hyun, was embroiled in controversy. Jo Hyun cosplayed as Ari from League of Legends at OGN's Game Olympic in June. Her cosplay was deemed too revealing by many netizens and she was repeatedly slut-shamed for the outfit. Jo Hyun later revealed that she saw these comments and that they made her cry and fans jumped to defend her. The most recent controversy once again involved Jo Hyun and a response to the coronavirus. In February of 2020, Jo Hyun posted a screenshot to social media that suggested Chinese people be banned from Korea in order to, quote, save the Koreans first before taking any other measures, end quote. Many netizens did admit to agreeing with Jo Hyun, but criticized her for her bluntness and claimed that she is being insensitive and discriminatory. In response to the criticism she received, Jo Hyun responded, quote, Calm down, I'll try to be easygoing, but who cares if you're talking out of true sincerity if you're busy ripping me apart? I just want everyone to be healthy and well, and there are many people who think this is unfair, so why are you overthinking it? End quote. However, when the comments didn't stop, she responded again, quote, I just resonated with the last sentence. Let's save the Koreans first. That's all I agreed with, so please stop judging me so hard. I didn't mean any harm. I apologize. End quote. JTG Entertainment also released a statement stating that Jo Hyun simply meant she wanted everyone to stay healthy. These controversies, while not very extreme, did not cast the members of Barry Good in a flattering light, obviously. And while in most cases all publicity is good publicity, there was no way for Barry Good or their company to profit from these scandals. There are plenty of groups and idols involved in controversies that have used the publicity to their advantage and have ended up becoming more successful because of it. However, none of Barry Good's scandals ever reached a quote-unquote boiling point, meaning they never received enough attention from the public to create usable publicity for Barry Good and their company. In other words, none of their scandals were big enough or severe enough in nature to garner them any real attention. They only created problems for the members involved, the group as a whole, and their company. Barry Good's company has been notably bad at timing their comebacks, giving them almost no chance to garner attention or get a first win. In September of 2015, Barry Good came back with the digital single My First Love the same month that another group, Red Velvet, came back with the song Dum Dum and their first full-length album, The Red. This completely overshadowed Barry Good's comeback. Seven months later, on April 20th, 2016, Barry Good came back with their very first mini-album, Very Barry, with the lead single, Angel. Only five days later, Twice came back with Cheer Up and their second EP, Page Two. Cheer Up was one of the most successful girl group releases of the year, and Twice were snatching music show awards left and right, once again completely overshadowing Barry Good's comeback. Later that year, on the first day of November, Barry Good released their second mini-album, Glory. But just a little over a week prior, Twice had come back with the song TT and their third EP, Twice Coaster Lane One. As we all know, TT was a huge success both domestically and internationally, and it became the best-selling album by a girl group in 2016 in just a couple of months. Barry Good's comeback was once again overshadowed. On August 16th, 2018, Barry Good finally released their first ever full album, Free Travel. However, only eight days later, BTS came back with the song Idol and the repackaged album Love Yourself Answer. Their most recent comeback, Oh Oh, was only promoted for two days until Teha left the group. After her departure, promotion stopped. Out of the eight comebacks Barry Good had as a whole unit, half of them were overshadowed by groups much more powerful than them. This made it very difficult for Barry Good to ever have time alone in the spotlight and their company was doing little to nothing to help them. It's not uncommon for companies with less popular groups to reschedule comebacks if it's announced that a bigger group will be coming back around the same time so that the smaller group actually stands a chance at gaining more popularity and possibly getting their first win. However, JTG Entertainment did not do this and time and time again tossed Barry Good into a competition where they stood no chance. 
They also scheduled a comeback literal days before a member was about to leave, which kept the group from properly promoting their comeback. Poor timing on the part of the company continuously keeps Barry Good from ever getting a real chance at success. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know what other groups you'd like to see included in this series, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!